Welcome back to Off the Cuff, my name is John Malasa, and today we're continuing with the My Hero Academia series. Today we're covering Shoto Todoroki. Remember, if you'd like to see the full length two cents on Todoroki, or anything covered in the Off the Cuff videos, just let me know in the comments. With that, let's get started. Pros and cons. Pros are up first. 1. Shoto has a great backstory. His father is a class act there and should probably not be a parent. He's born with the expectation of beating All Might, and he was bred like a show dog to do so. He lives in the shadow of his father, and when we find this out, we just want him to win his fight with the main character. Going into the fight, he's set up to be the character for Deku to beat, but by the end, we're with Deku. We want Todoroki to win and get past his limitations. Two, Todoroki is believably powerful. We're told that he was born to be a perfect mix of fire and ice powers, and sweet mercy did they get that right. After a few tries, if you know what I mean. Wink wink. Todoroki is terrifyingly strong. I mean, if he really let loose, there's only a handful of heroes that could even touch him. And I know this is probably going to be a hot debate. Get it? Hot? Because he's got fire. Okay. This will be a hot debate, but... He could probably beat All Might if he was an adult. Okay, okay, let the comment section rise to fire. I didn't even mean that one, actually. No pun intended, rise to fire. <laughs> 3. Shoto deals with real problems that aren't solved instantly. Deku is able to reach him, sure, but the healing from family abuse is a really difficult and long process, as anybody who's had to deal with that knows. Having Shoto visit his mother in a mental hospital and go to his father's agency to grow stronger and get beyond these things that are holding him back is narrative brilliance. He has to work to overcome his weaknesses, like an actual person. 4. He has a little bit of his father in him. Notice how he calls out the villains who are adults for being beaten by a child, scolding them. Also, he lets his temper get the best of him a little bit in his fight with uh, cellophane or tape arms or Cyril, whatever you want to call him. It's actually kind of nice to see that he's not a complete rejection of his father, even though he'd like to be, and he still has a little influence in there. There's a lot to say positive about the character, but what are my negatives? One, he's a little too cliche, at least in his design. The fire and ice powers, the scar on the left side of his face, from a burn symbolizing his internal scarring, the fact that he's one half white because he's half his mom, and one half red because he's half his dad. Like a two-faced thing, but with genetics. I mean, how would that even happen? Can you even imagine that? Anyway, I know it's aesthetic, but I think it's a little too on the nose for me. And two... I don't know if this is the voice actor, because I'm a dub-watching plebe who uh, will now get eradicated in the comments for watching dubs, but he could definitely emote more. I mean, he just says he's mad to indicate that he's mad. I'm serious, both times he gets angry, and I'll have the clip after this, he just says, I'm mad. Show don't tell, Todoroki. Sorry, it was a bit much. I was angry as all. That being said, I think Todoroki's a great character, and I think everybody would agree with me that his fight with Deku was a huge upset in the story, definitely indicating that this character has a lot to move forward with going on in the series. So, I'm John Malasa, and that's my two cents. Do you like Todoroki? Do you hate him? Do you have some third opinion that no one will agree with? Continue the conversation below, and if you like this video, like, subscribe, and click that little notification bell to get updated on all our videos. Have a great day, guys, and come back next time when we continue with our off-the-cuff My Hero Academia.